Hello and welcome back to our equipment system series. In this episode we're going to eventually get around to having our character model change and change their mesh based on what items we got equipped. In, but first of all we are going to add a few things and fix a couple of bits uh, before we jump into that. But the first thing we want to do is go into our uh, wardrobe UI and in the designer view for this we need to assign the default row name for each of these slots and this is going to be pretty simple it's just going to be the name of the row name that has zero zero in it so it basically has a clear and it's set to none uh, if you don't know what one is what just go into equipment data table and find them in here so here zero zero for me is bald torso zero zero is shirtless and so forth uh, which makes it a bit easier when you're typing this out because now you know exactly that it's just the name plus zero zero this is uh, legs score zero zero uh, this one would be feet zero zero now I don't have feet yet in my data table we'll be adding that in a moment um, we've got facial hair zero zero and accessory And finally, weapon, which again is one that I don't have yet in my data table, so we will do that in a moment. Okay, so let's add those the feet and the weapon to the data table. So we're going to here, add row, new row, feet underscore zero zero. So I'm keeping the same format as I have been using, and I'm just going to set this to uh, no shoes. Um, actually, I'll just call barefoot. And we'll have the thumbnail be the none uh, texture that we've been using. And we're going to add another one. And this will be weapon underscore zero zero. This will have the name of unarmed. Again, set to the none texture. Save that. And if we go back to my equipment, uh, so my wardrobe UI, and refresh this with a compile, these should change to reflect those new thumbnails. So the next thing we need to do is keep track of which slot is our active slot. So at the start, when you first load it up at the moment, you have to first click on a slot and then click on it again to see its contents, which is not what we want. We want it to uh, just show us the contents straight away of the active slot. So we have to go to our graph here and um, after the bindings, we're going to drag this down here. And I realized we could also put this uh, set here on the completed as well. So on completed of this for loop, I'll go on there. And then we'll set the active slot here, go uh, set. And we're just going to drag in our torso round, which is the top one we want to use. So we want to use that. So drag torso slot out and plug that into there. Hit compile. Uh, so let's just go into my data table and just add the ones for these two. So that is weapon and feet. So we're going to add data table and add those two blank ones in here. So feet zero zero and the name uh, no shoes. Yes. Um, and this will be all set to oh, the texture for none. No mesh and no stats. And then we're going to add a weapon one as well. Zero zero. And we'll play unarmed. And again, set that to none as well. So if we hit save on that and go back to wardrobe UI, hit compile, these will now update to reflect that change. So next thing we'll do is make it so it highlights the active slot and then de-highlights it when it becomes unactive. So we're going to go to the equipment weapon slot, wardrobe equipment slot, sorry. And we're going to make a custom event in here. And we'll call this one um, uh, become active slot. And this become active slot, we're going to add sort of an outline around it, I guess. So on the design view, we're going to design what it's going to look like when it is active. So if I go to my border here, and that moment we've got brush color of black, I can change this to something else. So if I change this to say uh, yellow, or like maybe not so much yellow, we'll just do maybe this, maybe. 
Uh, we're going to take, actually, I'll just, I'll just do white. It'll be fine. I'll do white. Do a white color. That'll be our highlight border around the actual image. So I'm going to cancel that. And that'll be the border. So I'm going to tick that as variable. And we'll do this one as um, icon border. Go to the graph of this. Drag icon border out. And then from there, I'm going to set color. I'm going to set brush color. And this is going to be set to white. Okay. And then we've got another one for when we want it to become an active. So you can use the same function for this, make it a bit more, uh, a bit more concise. So on become active slot, we're going to add an input and it's going to be a Boolean. They is active. And if that is true, we're going to choose the white one. And if it's false, we're going to choose black. So we can use a select node for this. So in brush color, drag this out and do select color and put the boolean into the pick a so when it's true a is going to be white and when it's false b is going to be black and that'll do so then we go back to our wardrobe ui on the graph where we set the active color here active slot sorry um before we do that we have to tell the other one to deactivate so we can get the current active slot get yeah. and we're going to do uh type in active and you'll see become active slot and put that in as false so that one turns off and then we want to take the active slot out again actually no just use the pin here that'd be fine and do become active slot again but this time we'll tick that one to be true the only thing we have to do then is just go up to here and do exactly the same with this active slot up here for the default one so hit compile uh, oh, I've got to plug that in. Hit compile and that should all clear up. And if we go and push play on this now, we should see it look a little bit better with some highlighting around the edges. So you've got highlight around that one, but you can now pick the items down here. Oh, I've got to change the category on those ones, but nonetheless, we'll go into that in a second. And you can see the active slot changes on which one I've got selected, which is great. Okay, so let's just quickly fix the data table so that they don't just appear in the torso one. And uh, let's go back to our data table. There we go, we've got to change the torso to this one's feet, and this one would be weapon. Okay, and that'll fix that. Okay, uh, and by the way, that error keeps coming up. Let's get rid of that while we're here. We go to wardrobe UI, find where I've got my. Uh, now I'll close it. Is it this one I've got it going on? Um, maybe something else. Hold on. Let's just play that again. It happens when you close uh, the inventory, uh, the, the game while inventory is open. So you see here, access now. I'm trying to read get player controller. That's because you are not in the um, the correct place for it. So on end play, the get player controller is going to be not valid. So we're going to put that into an is valid node here, and that will solve that problem for us. Only because we're closing the game while the menu is open. That's all. I'll clear that message there for us. Okay, so that's that done. Next, we're going to make the function to call when we want to change something on the player character. So I'm going to go to the third person player character, which is this guy here, and we're going to create a function for this. The function is going to be uh, equip um, item, I guess. Now, equip item needs two things. It needs a row name and it needs a category. It needs an, so it knows which one to replace. So we're going to go to inputs and do category and change that to category. And then we're going to add the row name to it as well. So we know which item we're replacing it with. So go into there and do name. Okay, so now we've got the category coming through. We need to know which one of these is the right one. So what we're going to do is make that array system again. So I'm going to drag out each of these or just go to my construction script and copy these all again. And put them into my equip item. And I want to make sure these are in the correct order of the categories in my, in, uh, my equipment uh, array, um, enum. So we're going to make array. And add the various pins. 
And I know torso is the first one, so that goes in there. But then if I open up the others, I can then see a lot clearer. So legs, hair, and facial hair. So legs, hair, and facial hair. And then we've got accessory, feet, and weapon. Back on here, accessory. Uh, our feet, we don't have one, but we'll make in here. Uh, hands, we don't have one for hands either. And uh, weapon, we don't have. have weapon? We have weapon here. We use that. So we've got uh, accessory, feet, and weapon. Accessory, feet, and weapon. Oh, that'll go into six. So don't need seven. We'll get rid of seven. But five we'll leave blank as we're not using that. Uh, hands one we've got here, but we're not really using the hands. Uh, we've got these sort of hand meshes here, but they're just fixed in place, so we're not really using them. Um, and uh, feet we haven't got anything for feet so we're not worried about that in here but you just put in the in the correct order you have based on the character you've got okay so now we've got that we're then going to take uh our array here and we're going to get a copy and that'll be the category here and we can't just plug it straight in you do have to get an int first so you go int and then plug it in so now we know which item we want to change. Next, we want to drag that out and do set skeletal mesh. And then we have to find the row name from the data table. So uh, get row, get data table row. And we want to choose the equipment data table. And now we have access to all the row data here, including the mesh and all the stats which we'll need. So on here, just drag this out, do row found, and the first thing we do is just set skeletal mesh. And the mesh is going to come from there. Hit compile, and that's it. So later on we'll do the stat stuff, but for now that will do. So what we have to do now is call this function from our uh, inventory. So let's go back to our wardrobe inventory, and go back to the graph of this. So here we have the item selected. When we select the item, we take it to refresh the slot details in the active slot. So if I go to refresh slot details, I can then call this new new function we made on here. I'm going to get the player character and then cast to our player character. Uh, the person character. And we're going to then call the uh, function to equip item and this is going to require the category that we've got associated to the slot and the row name and hit compile so that will go through and set it all up for us now because they're set to none at the moment none will then set the row name to none as well and therefore not do anything you may get an error so to come across and counter that error straight away if row is not found nothing will happen so don't worry about it too much um if i hit play now we hopefully will get that working and tab and i click on items here and you can see it update and reflect in game i can add air pieces beard glasses to him all sorts okay and there we have our character equipped with all their items so it's been a long time coming but there we go we have got the equipment now equipping onto our character so in the next episode we're going to take those stats we've got from the character and be able to calculate them all up and and then sum them all up to our stats the character has which then can be used for combat uh, movement and so forth so join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can watch that episode plus all my other videos before everyone else. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons, YouTube members and everyone who subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.